Christmas and Happy New Year. Hello there, friends. Welcome to DK Online. It's great to see you again. My name is Miss Denise, and thank you for joining us today. During the month of December, we've been learning about the real meaning of Christmas through the Word of God. Before we go any further, friends, let's pray. Father God, thank you for this time together, and thank you for your Word. Help us to learn more about Christmas so we can share with others and appreciate the reason for the season. In Jesus' name, amen. You know what time it is? It's time for worship time. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Thank you, friends, for joining us in worship. This amazing lesson comes from the Bible in the book of Luke. Hey, everybody. It's me, Jacob. Sorry if it seems like I'm in a rush. Got to make this quick because it's the holidays. So you know what that means? Lots of plans on the old calendar. I got something happening every single day leading up to the big day. Christmas. Christmas is celebrating Jesus. God's greatest gift. So, let me see if there's anything new in this big wrapped box. And then I can get busy celebrating. Here we go. No way. This is what Christmas is all about right here. Ginger spiced pecan with a hint of nutmeg, some oregano mixed in just for a little flavor and sprinkled on top with chocolate sprinkles. And then we mix in some of Aunt Dory's famous protein powder just to build the muscle. Non-dairy, gluten-free, if you can believe it, 
Dory can make it. And I'm, 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 I'm sensing a hint of chocolate now. She's, she's mixing up. She's gone off the grid. She's mixing up the recipe. It smells so good. But the taste, the taste, oh! I don't have the words to describe the taste of Aunt Dory's famous pie. I'm gonna need to set this down for a second. My family's been going to Aunt Dory's at Christmas time ever since I was a little kid. That's always been the plan. I get to hang out with my cousins and catch up on old times. We always eat the biggest meal. You never saw so many casseroles. But if your belly's smart, it always saves room for the pie. Mmm. Sorry, sorry. Come on, Jacob, get it together. I'm getting distracted by pie. Sorry. This year, we had to change the plan a little bit. Aunt Dory hasn't been feeling too well, and the family thought it'd be best if we wait until she's feeling better before we get together. It's kind of a bummer when plans don't go the way you'd expect, but we're trying to make the best of things. Find things to be joyful about, you know? Hey, the story today is about changing plans. This girl, Mary, she had to change her plans, not just for the holidays, but for her whole life. And do you think she was able to be joyful? We'll find out in just a minute. I think I'll stick around for the, uh, uh, for the story. <sighs> and the pie. Maybe just some pie, just a little bit of pie. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story the epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter one, verses 26 through 56. Mary lived in the tiny town of Nazareth, an ordinary village at the edge of Jewish lands. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Mary herself was an ordinary girl. Oh, hello. She grew up learning the Jewish scriptures. A child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, he will rule over us, and he will be called Wonderful Advisor and Mighty God. When will this happen? Only God knows. It's been hundreds of years. Mary went to fetch water from the well and baked loaves of bread and swept out the hard-packed earth floor. It's important to clean the dirt off the dirt. <laughs> she was also engaged to be married to a carpenter named Joseph. Mary must have expected that her life would follow a very ordinary path until one day when everything changed. Greetings, Mary. Suddenly, right there in the dim room, a brilliant being appeared. Mary probably dropped whatever she was holding, a broom, a batch of bread dough, a needle and thread. Who, me? The Lord has blessed you in a special way. He is with you. Mary blinked, trying to take it all in. The whole room glowed with light. I, I don't understand. Do not be afraid, Mary. God is very pleased with you. Mary couldn't find any words. In one heartbeat, her very ordinary day had flipped upside down. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son. You must call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. He will rule forever over his people. That kingdom will never end. The words of Isaiah may have echoed in Mary's head. A child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. He will rule over us. She finally found her voice. How can this happen? I'm not even married yet. The light flared even brighter. The Holy Spirit will make this happen. Your relative Elizabeth will have a child even though she is old. People thought she could not have children, but she has been pregnant for six months now. That's because what God says will always come true. Mary's heart pounded. Her cousin Elizabeth was old enough to be a grandmother, and if she was having a baby, anything could happen. I serve the Lord. May it happen to me just as you said it would. The light faded. The towering angel disappeared. Mary leaned against the wall to collect her thoughts. Elizabeth, I have to go see her. The journey to Elizabeth and Zechariah's home in the hill country of Judah would have taken many days of travel along dusty roads. Finally, Mary arrived. Why, it's Mary. Elizabeth, 
I have so much to tell you. As Mary spoke, Elizabeth could feel the child inside of her leap and kick for joy. God's Holy Spirit spoke to Elizabeth. God has blessed you more than other women, and blessed is the child you will have. As soon as I heard the sound of your voice, the baby inside of me jumped for joy. You are a woman God has blessed. You have believed that the Lord would keep his promises to you. Mary laughed and cried at the same time as she hugged her older cousin. God confirmed once again that Mary could find joy in the extraordinary plan God had for her. Now tell me your story. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for several weeks. She was so filled with joy, she poured out her heart in a song to God. My soul gives glory to the Lord. My spirit delights in God, my Savior. He has taken note of me, even though I'm not considered important. He shows his mercy to those who have respect for him. He has filled with good things those who are hungry. He has helped the people of Israel who serve him. He has done it just as he had promised to our people of long ago. At the end of three months, Mary returned home to Nazareth, ready to see how God's plan was about to unfold. Uh, oh, I can't believe I just ate that whole pie. Almost the whole pie. That was not part of the plan. But hey, I definitely felt the joy. Maybe you're like me, and your plans had to change for some reason this season. Reason season. I rhymed that on purpose. Nah, I'm just teasing. It is totally okay to feel sad when plans don't go the way you expect. I'm sad I don't get to go to Aunt Dory's. But, like Aunt Dory says, you don't have to dwell on the sadness. You don't have to stay sad forever. There could be a bigger reason why plans change. Think about it. Before God revealed his plan, Mary was just like any one of us. She had her own hopes and dreams for the future, just like we do. But her plans changed because God had a bigger plan for her. It's the same with us. My plans, God's plans. God knows everything that's ever happened and he knows everything that's going to happen. So he has a plan for you. It may be different than your plan, but trust me, it's a bigger, and better plan. So, if you're sad when plans change, that's okay. Just don't dwell there. You can have joy knowing that your plans are in bigger hands. Plans hands, that sort of rhymes. Here's the one thing to remember today. You can have joy because God has a plan for you. It's cool to think that the creator of the universe has a plan just for me. I don't know about you, but that makes me kind of, uh, <laughs> Also, kind of excited, huh, and kind of hungry. One more slice of pie won't hurt. Oh, looks like the plans are changing again. Oh boy, the plans are changing fast. I'll catch you next time.
Wasn't that lesson amazing, friends? How do you think Mary felt about the news that Angel Gabriel told her? No matter how she felt, Mary was able to find joy in a situation that no one else ever experienced. God was with her every step of the way. You can have joy because God has a plan for you too. This lesson has blessed me today and I'm sure it blessed you too. Friends, let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for the joy we have in you during the Christmas season and always. Thank you for sending Jesus to be our savior. Thank you for giving us hope, love, and joy through Jesus that we may be a light to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, friends, for joining us this week. Don't forget to share this lesson with your parents and your friends. See you next week. Bye-bye.